The art of glass making has been with us almost since the birth of mankind. Today, glass is taken for granted, yet few realize how it has evolved since those far off days. The one requirement that remains constant at all times is the existence of fire. And uh, perhaps also one or two fire gods. Thomas on my Thomas. Woo! You know, Ash, even though man has only been around for the blink of an eye, I still marvel at his ingenuity. Really? For instance, who'd have thought they'd achieve so much from a simple lump of shiny rock? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I gave that to them in a sudden moment of mischievous amusement. Huh? They called it obsidian. The beginnings of what is now known as glass. Oh. I can't remember when man made glass himself, but I do remember a man who told a story about it. Phoenician merchant sailors were camping out on a beach using blocks of soda rock to prop up their cooking pots. But when they woke up in the morning, they found the campfire had forged the soda and sand together, forming glass. You know, in about 1,500 B.C., men actually began to make glass objects by winding molten glass around mud and dung cores. Yuck! Ash? Ash! In ancient Egypt, glass was as precious as gold or silver. So, fine glass objects were often placed in the tombs of great pharaohs. Ooh. Ooh. Seers long before would have predicted that at around 50 BC, man would learn how to blow glass, probably in somewhere like Syria, Lebanon, or Palestine. While the use of glass became prevalent in all cultures, the Romans began to blow glass much more commercially, developing techniques, 80% of which are still used today. This made glass products that were once precious and expensive far more affordable to the general public. By the 10th century, the first stained glass began to appear, devotedly made by skilled monks who saw glass as a means of transporting the light of God into their churches and cathedrals. Huh? Don't push me, Ash. These people did that, and look what I did to them! Hey, all I'm trying to do is give you a little culture, a little education. Anyway, a little over 1,200 years after my little disagreement with Pompeii, European glassmaking began to flourish. This golden age began in Venice, but developed more on the nearby island of Murano. All kinds of fabulous techniques were developed in Murano, providing the highly prized work that became known as Venetian glass. Ah. What the? It is our fire that is the common link here. You might at least show a little more interest. Ah. By the 1600s, the Murano artists began to travel further afield, raising the quality of glasswork throughout the whole of Europe. Science and alchemy, too, benefited from the invention of glass. Galileo would never have made the discoveries he did if it hadn't been for the glass lenses in his telescope. In the early 1900s, glass art came under the spell of the Art Nouveau movement, where much of its design style was taken from the natural world. This period was typified by Louis Comfort Tiffany's beautiful masterpieces. The process of pressed glass marked a severe decline for the more independent, hand-blown variety during the Industrial Revolution. This decline was consolidated at the dawn of the 20th century in America, when Michael Owen's bottle blower machine cranked out four inexpensive glass bottles a second. Three centuries after its golden age, there was a revival in Murano, 
Masters such as Antonio Salviati and Paolo Venini popularized a new but simplified form of glass making. Um, as a reaction to the industrial era, a number of significant independent glass artists emerged towards the end of the 20th century. Their existence, inspired by the pioneering work of the great American glass artist Harvey Littleton, ultimately became known as the Studio Glass Movement. Perhaps the most recognized and influential artist of the Studio Glass Movement today is Dale Chihuly, co-founder of the Pilchuck School in the Pacific Northwest. Chihuly was a friend and collaborator of the great Italian master Lino Taglia Pietra, who generously came to the region to teach the 500-year-old secrets of Murano glassmaking. Chihuly's work is now widely prized and admired throughout the world. Glass, it's totally mystifying. Uh, it's mystified me, it's mystified people for 5,000 years. Uh, it's one of the most magical materials that you can possibly work with. <clears throat> so, the need for glass... Huh? The need for glass is unceasing, whether for plain and simple everyday objects used universally, or else for the rare and prized works of art that graciously adorn homes, communities, and art galleries. It is through a unique alchemy of fire and earth, in addition to the infinite expression of the human spirit, that glass has become an essential ingredient of all life. This surely earmarks the glassmakers of the world as fire gods in their own right, creative masters of the sacred flame. Why, Ash! That was quite wonderful! You're not such an ignoramus after all. Whatever you say, Bernie. Whatever you say. Mm -hmm.